Hey guys, this is the first in a series of videos on running the H-Series machine. And uh, what I want to talk about first is just how to run the machine safely without uh, crashing it or injuring yourselves. This is a CNC machine. It's very different from a typical 3D printer in that uh, we can use tools of differing tool lengths. Um, we can also have vices and rotary axes and things in the build volume. <clears throat> so it is possible to, uh, to crash the machine. So the first thing to talk about for sure is safety. There are multiple points where you can get pinched or get your hands crushed on this machine if you're, you're not being careful. So the first is the Z axis. It's a very strong axis. Um, X and Y are driven with a 10 to 1 um, ball screw. The Z axis is 5 to 1. So it has to be powerful enough to lift this arm um, and move it quickly so it is powerful enough to hurt you. Uh, so just keep your hands out of this region whenever the machine is running. Keep your hands especially away from the Y-axis as well. This um, danger sticker is referring to the pinch point um, from underneath the Y-axis here. Also, be careful if you're reaching in here when the tools are hot. Careful not to burn yourself and be careful not to cut yourselves on the cutting tools. So just a, a standard flat end mill or a chamfer end mill those are very sharp, so when you're reaching through this, this area, be very careful um, not to come into contact with those. And whenever you're, you're doing work on the machine, um, make sure that the spindles are off. Preferably when you're doing any maintenance work, the machine should be um, turned off uh, or at least have the e-stop in. Now, in order to be able to run this machine without crashing it, uh, we need to generally understand the, the coordinate systems of the machine, um, how, it, how it moves, like the direction of travel, and also how it applies offsets, both tool offsets and work offsets. So that's what we'll talk about next. Um, so let me just start by homing the machine. So if I come to the control screen and I come down to this home all button. This will um, send each axis to its end stop and then define a position from there. So that's giving the machine a coordinate system reference. So that's, it's kind of defining the coordinate system, the overall like, location of each axis within its range of travel. So that's just the starting point of the machine. And what, what happened there is that the bed moved to the back right corner of its travel and hit its end stops. The arm moved up to its end stop um, and the, the turret indexed until it hit its end stop and then came back to where the probe is. The bed came back to the center of its travel. Um, now the center of its travel is a relative measure because there's no reference point um, in the center of X and Y. The only reference point is at the end of the axes. So when you're working with a CNC machine, it's always helpful to think of the motion from the perspective of the tool. So the bed moved to the back right corner um, of its travel on its end stops. But if you're thinking from the perspective of the tool, the tool moved to the bottom left corner of the build volume. So you can think of that as the, the most negative in X and Y uh, of the travel of the machine. And then the bed moved back to, it, to the center so that the tool moved positive in X and Y to the center of its travel. And um, then the machine stopped there with the z-axis all the way at the top of its travel. So um, if we look at the control screen, the machine is saying it, it's at 0, 0 in x and y, and then 215.46 in z. So those values are based on preset axis lengths that are in the configuration file. We can talk about that later. But um, generally, we just need to understand that the machine has a set location that is its, its home position. And then from there, we can start to make definitions. So we can right click on these, these um, values here and define those uh, to be whatever we want. But that, that gets very dangerous because um, then the machine doesn't know where the end of, of its travel is. And um, we're, we're actually changing the absolute values of the coordinate axes. So although you can do that here, I don't recommend it at all. So what we will want to do is come down and um, define the location of the bed by clicking Home Z. Now, these buttons are not all that intuitive. Home All 
is what we just saw. Home X will send um, the bed to the end of its travel to its end stop, and Home Y will do the same. It will um, it will send the the bed back to its end stop, just as we saw. But in in those cases, they don't bring the machine back to the center of the travel. They just stay at the end stop. Home Z, on the other hand, rather than just moving the Z axis to its end stop, will uh, call up the touch probe and then probe directly down. So it won't move X and Y. It'll just go straight down in Z until it makes contact with something. In this case, we're just going to make contact with the bed. So it's going to it's going to come down um, until it touches the bed. It'll it'll touch once, going fast, and it'll slow slowly. Um, come back down again to get a more accurate measurement, and then it'll go up and measure the axis length from where it probed to the end stop. And now we can see that, it, it, as we had stored in, <coughs> in the configuration file, um, it measured the axis length at 215.46. So we can also see that the machine is very repeatable.